Hey everybody, Jeff Harmon here from the Photo Taco Podcast. I wanted to do a a quick, well, fairly quick. This might end up taking a little bit of time, but a, a YouTube video that explains one of the very common questions that I get as people, as photographers use Lightroom and round trip into Photoshop. So if you only use Lightroom, you're probably not going to be too interested in this video. But if you've ever round tripped into Photoshop to edit a photo and then not found your photo when you come back into Lightroom, it's, it's missing. You don't know what happened to it, to your edited version that you did in Photoshop then this video is for you. I'm going to show you a few things that could have gone wrong and could explain why it is, why it is your photo does not did not end up in Lightroom. All right, so let's start with so, some basics here. This is a, a photo that I got in a high school basketball game. Um, and some of the important things to notice as we go through this, just so you can track things. 4284, that's an important number that we're going to track as we're working on this. It's uh, It was shot with a Canon 7D Mark II camera. It was shot on February 15th, 2019. All right, so uh, we're, we're going to do a basic edit. And most photographers decide to do this from the develop module. And that's kind of a key thing because one of the issues is an immediate obvious. It's not immediately obvious when you come back, but we're going to start in the develop module and we want to edit this photo in Photoshop, which is a very common thing that photographers want to do. They want, that's part of the reason you're using the Adobe tools. Lightroom is a really good editor or catalog system that helps you track your photos, manage your photos, do some basic editing, a lot of editing. And Photoshop, it, on those few images where you decide that you want to go and do a little bit more editing, you can go into Photoshop and then there's this seamless integration where it's simple to bring it into Photoshop. You don't have to go find the file on the file system and load it up into Photoshop. And you don't have to worry about, or you shouldn't have to worry about, how you're going to see your photo when you're done. And that's what I'm going to show you. Uh, when that doesn't work right, it's frustrating. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do right now. So let's pretend that we wanted to edit this photo. It's, it's a pretty decent shot. There's a bunch of others around it, but it, it's not a bad shot. And so uh, you can go you can right click and do edit in and edit in Photoshop or the keyboard shortcuts. I highly recommend everybody learn them. So I, I want to include them all in my videos. Control E on the PC and command E on the Mac. So I'm going to hit control E since I'm on a PC and it's going to load it up into Photoshop. And there it is. All right. Now we're going to do a really stupid, trivial edit. We just don't, I don't want to spend time. It doesn't matter what the edit would be. So we're not going to spend time on that in this video. We're just going to mark the test. Okay. That's enough to say I've, I've now changed the photo in Photoshop. And then here is the first mistake you can make. Actually, two of the mistakes that you could make that would make it so that Lightroom and Photoshop won't play nice together. You don't see your edited photo, your Photoshop edited photo back in Lightroom. The first one would be if you closed Lightroom down. Now, sometimes you don't have a lot of CPU, memory, whatever the resources are. Maybe you have a hard time running both Photoshop and Lightroom together at the same time. But if you shut down Lightroom at this point, before you have saved your photo and let Lightroom receive it, you kind of break that link and it doesn't work. So Lightroom and Photoshop, they have to kind of stay up together all of the time. If you are struggling with resources, go close your browsers, especially Chrome browsers. They just take a lot of memory, a lot of CPU. Even if you're not actively doing anything, if you have Gmail up, if you have a whole bunch of tabs up, there's a lot of CPU and memory that are being used by those browsers. Those are the things you might want to close down instead of closing down Lightroom and Photoshop. All right. So if you closed Lightroom at this point before you saved, that would be a problem. Another problem would be if you did save as or you exported the photo for like save for web legacy or export as export as JPEG, any of those functions you're not going to be telling Lightroom about the save the changes that you're making. It's going to be saved outside of this whole round tripping process that you want. You don't want to use those. All you want to do is either do save, file save, control S or command S are the shortcut keys, or you can just hit the X here, which might be a good way to do it so that you don't still have the, the image open in Lightroom. And then Photoshop asks, do you want to save this? And I'll just say yes. All right. So now we're going to switch back to Lightroom. And as I do that, you can see that it's not showing me the photo that I just edited. In fact, if we go over here, 
Remember, I said 4284. There's my original. Where is my photo that I just edited? It's not here. Let's check the end of the time of the film strip here. Nope, it's not there. It is, it is not showing. It is not showing up here. Something is wrong, right? There is. I set it up this way to show that it's wrong. But let's let's go over a couple of th- more things to check. The first I would check, and the most common way I see this being an issue, is if you go back over into the library module, and now if I look at the sort order right here, this is a place that I find most photographers don't really know what it is. If the sort order is set to added order, then either it's not it, it's not going to show right next to the photo, just no matter what it is. Because when you have it set, the sort order set to added order, like you're telling Lightroom, you want to see in the film strip down here, you want to see them shown in the order they were added to the catalog. Whenever you add a photo to the catalog, it, uh, Lightroom notes down the date and time that that photo was added to the catalog. And that's the order they're going to be shown in. So that's one of the problems. And we're going to come back to this in just a second when we're going to fix it. The other reason or another thing to check that would be really good for you to go do is in preferences. So I went to edit the preferences and on this external editing tab, there's a a little preference right here. Stack with original. This is telling Lightroom that when you come back from editing externally, and it doesn't matter if it's just if it's Photoshop or some other external editor that you might be using, like say Luminar, for example, something like that. If this is checked, then Lightroom does a much better job of grouping those two photos together, the original, the original photo along with your edited photo. And so, so that is uh, a good preference to have set. I'm not going to do it right now, but that's, I normally do run Photoshop. I had to set it up so that I didn't have that preference in order to have some of these things work, uh, the issues to show you some of the problems. All right. So that, those are a couple of the things. I'm not going to change them yet because I want to show you another way that this can be a problem. The reason in this case that none of those things would have helped yet was because I'm using a smart collection. All right. So if you don't, if you're not familiar with smart collections, and it could just be the use of normal collections too, but if you are ed- if you created a smart collection and that's how you're editing your photos, a great thing to do. I'm a huge fan of collections. Collections are really, really cool. I love collections. But to create this situation, what I did is I created a, a smart collection that kind of it's like a, a search, kind of thinking like you know a Google search. You all are familiar with that. It's like I'm saying to Lightroom, I want you to search through all of my photos. And there's hundreds of thousands that are in my library right now. And I want you to show me only those in this smart collection that have a capture date of February 15th, 2019, which you saw on the photo at the very beginning. That is the date that these photos were captured. And they only show me the ones that have had adjustments made in Lightroom. Has adjustments is true. So these are adjustments in Lightroom. This does not apply to whatever you would have done in Photoshop. So when I came back from Photoshop and I'm looking in Lightroom, though I have told Lightroom I only want to see in the film strip or in the library view, in the develop module, I only want to see right now while I'm in this collection those images that have that both that capture date and have Lightroom adjustments made. Now, even though I edited the photo, I added the stupid test text to the image. That's adjustments. That's things that I did in Photoshop. And when that photo comes back, even though Lightroom does have it, it cataloged that photo. I'm just not seeing it right now because that new photo that came back from Photoshop That photo hasn't had any adjustments made to it in Lightroom. Even though the original photo did, it has had adjustments made. The photo that came back from from Photoshop, it hasn't. I haven't gone and adjusted anything there. So it's not going to show me that in this view. So one of the things I can do is I can right click on this and I can say, I want to go to the folder in the library. Let's see how that looks different. I'm now going to take myself out of the smart collection and I'm going to go to the folder in the library. And there it is. There's my photo that I have. Where is my other photo? My test photo is still not showing here. And that's again because I told you 
added order, it's not going to be a problem. In fact, I can show you if I scroll over to the right of the film strip, there's my edited image right here at the end of the film strip. And it's because it got added today, right now, several months after I added the photos to Lightroom. So it got banished to the end of the film strip. So that's that's one problem or way that you can see that that's a, a, an issue. But if I if I come back over, if I scroll back over, oh, there we go. Lightroom slowed down a bit. If I scroll back over to where my photo, my photo is, and I got to see it's all the way there it is. All right. So in the film strip, it's right there. If I only come here and I change to either capture time is the one I prefer. I like capture time. Or you can do file name. Some of these others may work too, but file name is another common one that you may choose on the sort order to solve this problem. I'm going to choose capture time. And I'm going to change that. And now you can see, so here's my photo. And look at this right here, right next to it is my photo that I edited. They, now Lightroom is showing them next to each other. And you can see it right here in the, in the film strip as well. They're right next to each other. All right, so that are those are the things to check. Make sure that you have capture time or file name here in the sort order. I would absolutely change it. it it's not as good a thing just to have this preference set, but when you come and do stack with original, then it still banishes your newly edited photo to the end of the film strip. But at least when you come back into Lightroom, it shows them together and it, it automatically moves your view over to the end of the film strip. So I would absolutely, if, if this is a common thing that you do and you want to have it be there, I would check that checkbox and make sure that that is enabled. And then you'll be able to see your photos next to each other. There is another thing that can cause problems here. I don't want to go into it in the video because it's really complicated to set it up and very complicated to solve it. For that, you should go over to my blog post at phototacopodcast.com. It has to do with case sensitivity in folder structures if on your computer. If you somehow change the case of your word, like you had a, a capital July or sorry, a lowercase July in the folder when you did it, and then somehow you change it to an upper July, Lightroom actually gets confused with that. And it thinks that you have different fo folders in different uh, photos in different folders. And it can be it can be another reason that some of these th these uh, kinds of problems can happen where your your photo doesn't seem to show up, but that's a very complicated and a very rare case. So I'm not even going to cover it here. I just mentioned that if you want more information, you can go over to photo phototacopodcast.com, and you can um, you can go and, and find that article. And uh, that's that's it. So I I hope this helps you. I hope you it, it solves some of the problems that you may have seen why you don't think your, your image showed up uh, in Lightroom after you did your uh, processing in Photoshop. If you want, if you like this video, you got to go subscribe to the YouTube channel as I put out more videos. And I'd love to have you subscribe to the podcast too. phototacopodcast.com has all the ways you can subscribe. I go through tips and tricks like this very regularly in the Photo Taco podcast. Uh, another podcast I'm on that talks about photography is masterphotographypodcast.com, where that's a weekly show. Photo Taco is more of a monthly show, a monthly podcast, but I'd love to have you go and subscribe to both of those podcasts so you can get more tips and tricks just like these over there. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you again later.